Thank you, Leslie. Uh, and thank you everyone for joining us today. So today we'll be talking about how we can become water saving heroes. And this is part of the Waiheke Sustain at Home um, project from Waiheke Resources Trust. And yes, I hope everybody can enjoy it and try to have a good time. If you have any questions, you're welcome to pop them into the chat. So if we can go to the chat right now and just say uh, which neighborhood of Waiheke we live on, just to test the chat, we can jump in right now. And um, so you can find where it is. So right up here, you can find your chat. So we have Oniroa, Surfdale. Yes, um, in Austin. So thank you everyone for that. Um, Leslie will then read the questions at the end and then we'll also unmute everyone so we can have a little corero about what we just learned. So my name is Natalia Larson and I'm the project coordinator for Waiheke Waterways Project. And Leslie is my colleague. If you would like to introduce yourself, Leslie. Great, thank you, Natalia. I'm Leslie Hamilton and I am the Waiheke Waterway Project Catalyst and I help Natalia with these educational programs and some of the other sharing we do to help people learn how to be water wise. Um, before we start, I would just like to share um, a small um, saying with you. Kaora te wai, kaora te whenua. Kaora te whenua, kaora te tangata. And it means if the water is healthy, the land will be nourished. If the land is nourished, people will be provided for. Just taking us back um, a moment to reflect on the importance of water. So what, would, what are we talking about today? So we're gonna talk about why we're here. We're gonna talk about water and your septic system. Uh, after that, how to check your water flow and how to check for any leaks. And then we're gonna move on to some water saving tips. After that, we'll have um, some time to do questions and answers. And of course the prize, the most exciting part of our workshops. So part of why we are here is because the Waiheke Waterways Project supports the United Nations Sustainability, Sustain, Sustainable uh, Development Goals, um, clean water and sanitation, life below water and life on land. We're also here because water is important. We all share this earth animals, plants, trees, and us all share the same water. So the small amount of water has to be shared by everyone and everything. So let's just have a look at how much water we're talking about. So if you can see here on the screen, we have this big drop of water and that's all the water in the world. The small one over here is all the fresh water in the world. And the tiny, tiny dot you can barely see over here is the amount of fresh water that is readily available. So that accounts for 0.3% of the total water we have in the world, water from lakes and streams, for example. Yes, only 0.3%. That's a very small amount when we think of it. And when we have to share this water with all the living creatures on earth, it's quite surprising. So how can we save water and money? Like I said, we're going to start with the relationship between water and your septic system, uh, how to check your flow, check for leaks, and water saving tips. So reducing your water usage to avoid overloading your septic system. Uh, this is very particular to Waiheke because everybody's on the septic system and sometimes we don't really think about how much water affects our septic system. So here's a little picture of a septic tank. This is a primary one, the old style. They'll all be a little bit different, but the impact that water has in the sept septic tank doesn't change. So you can see at the bottom, you have the sludge, the solids, and in the middle, you have the water. At the top layer, you have the scum or the fats that cover it. 
And here is how water gets into your septic tank. So if too much water or too much water at once gets in, it's just going to stir everything in there and mix the solids with the water and the scum and it can clog up your pipes that go that goes to the drain field. This is a little video of um, water going really fast into um, a septic field. So you can see, uh, imagine that going inside your tank and just stirring everything up. That's why sometimes, especially when we have visitors at home during the holidays, uh, and we everyone's taking a shower, everyone's cooking, we're doing loads of washing, and you can smell your septic tank. And you're like, wow, I've never noticed that smell before. That's because everything is being stirred up by too much water going in at once. So I have a question for you. It would be great if you could pop in your answer on our chat. Do you know how many people your septic system is consented for? Just gonna open the chat so I can see your answers. No. Good, Kathy. Yeah, I have no idea how many people my septic system is um, is consented for. Uh, so a good way to check is calling Sylvia from Green Acres. You can ask her or you can look into your septic system uh, consent form and it should say there. But a lot of people are not aware and especially if you're renting a home, it's not some, some information that you would have. Yeah, that's right, Kathy. When you upgrade, uh, you have, um, when you renovate, add a bedroom, you have to upgrade your septic because they have to account for all that extra water that the person will be, will be using. Thanks, everyone. So here's how we can check your flow. So the flow rate describes the amount of water coming out of a tap or shower fitting. We measure flow rates in liters per minute. Around nine liters per minute is an ideal rate. I know this is a lot of writing, so don't worry too much about it because I'll send this information to your email and then you'll have time to read it, absorb it, and come back to me if you have any questions. Uh, there's a simple test that you can do to see how much your shower or any other tap at your house uses, um, uh, so uses too much water. All you need is a bucket, a measuring jug, and a stopwatch. You can just use your phone. You turn the shower or the tap on at the pressure and temperature you normally use, and then you catch all the water from the shower or tap for six seconds and measure it. After that, you're going to multiply it by 10, and then you have how many liters per second that shower or tap is using. So I'll send you uh, the link to a video. It's really easy to do this test and it's a great way to know how your, um, your shower or your taps are performing at home. So to have an idea, if we have between six and nine liters per minute, that's really good. 12 is the average for a tap or a shower and 15 to 18 is excessive. So if you realize maybe your kitchen sink is using too much or, or your shower is very you know, crazy in terms of uh, liters per minute, would be good to talk to a plumber and check your options. Uh, one thing that you could do is use flow restrictors. So they're little gadgets that you can get from appliance stores. You can find them at placemakers or we can help you order them in. Uh, so you can fit them in your tap or your shower head. So that restricts the amount of water that comes out. And then you can reduce the water without losing pressure. One important thing to note is that you have to know if you're on mains or low pressure for your hot water boiler. Uh, because if you have um, a low pressure um, boiler, you can't use a flow restriction device. And I'll give you an example of what that is. 
So if your shower temperature and or the pressure changes when someone else is using hot water, that means you have low pressure. And if your cold water tap runs faster than your hot water tap, you also have a low pressure um, cylinder. So that's the case with me and my house. It's really annoying when I'm taking my quick shower and someone turns on the tap. I'm like, no, it's so precious. And for that reason, we can't really install anything to restrict the water. And when you buy the restrictor, they will have information on how you use it and what you should do. So how can we spot a leak? Checking for leaks is very important because a leak at your property can waste thousands of liters of water at considerable cost to you. A dripping tap can waste up to 33 liters each day. I know it doesn't seem like much. You just see a dripping tap and you're like, ah, oh, it's fine, I'll deal with that later. But if you add up 33 liters each day and then we come up to the dry season and you have to order water in, that's a lot of money you're spending. And as well, it's a lot of unnecessary water just going to your septic tank. Great. So how can we spot leaks? We look for dripping taps, look behind your dishwasher and washing machine for any sign of water. See if the hot water cylinder expansion relief valve is letting water drip into the gully trap. In dry weather, you look for damp patches in the garden, lawn, or driveway. And listen for running water inside your home when no taps, hoses, or showers are turned on. And this is what we can do now that everyone is locked in at home. Uh, pay attention to those sounds. Speaking of which, this is one of my favorite, the ghost water pump. I don't know if anyone has had that happen before, but sometimes I've heard my water pump just turn on and I'm like, no one is using water. What's going on? So that could be a sign that something is leaking at your house. Uh, a toilet leak, for example, is the most uh, common one because even, um, even if you renovated not long ago, the washer can get used up very quickly and then it can cause a very small leak that you can't see. Um, before you call anyone and spend the money on plumber, plumbers, you can actually do this very easy test over here. You just grab a square of toilet paper and place it on the inside of your bowl at the back and just leave it there for a bit and then you see if it gets wet. If it does get wet, it means that you have a small leak from your cistern and that could be using up your water and just turning on your water pump once in a while. Let me know if it's going too fast. I can take a little break. There we go. Eek, I have a leak. So uh, maybe some of you are like, I didn't realize that that was happening at my house, I actually might have a leak. So uh, contact your local plumber, contact us if you don't know who you should call and we can help you out. And now we're gonna go through some water saving tips because when we save water, we save life. How can we save water in the kitchen? Don't leave taps running while you're using the sink. Um, it was really a shock for me when I went to visit my family in Brazil and they're doing dishes and the water's just running the whole time. I'm like, no, I cringe now because after living on Waiheke for so many years, you know, that's the one thing you don't do. Um, also, you don't need to rinse your dishes before placing it in the dishwasher. Most new dishwashers can deal with that. Uh, you can upgrade to an energy efficient dishwasher. So when you do the, the tap test to see how many liters of water per minute your tap is using, and you think how long it takes to wash all your dishes by hand, you can use a lot of water washing them by hand. And if you get an energy efficient dishwasher, you will use half the amount of water. Be a water wise cook. So I think Kathy can share some of her um, ideas at the end of this presentation, how to be a water-wise cook 
one of my favorite ones is that if you're boiling eggs, you can save the water and pop it in your plants or outside in the garden. You get some of the calcium from the, the eggshells as well. So don't just dump it in your kitchen sink. It will just end up in your septic and it could go somewhere else. You can also keep a jug of drinking water in the fridge, especially when you have family or friends visiting, or if you have teenagers, you know, sometimes they can't remember which side is hot or cold and they'll run the tap a little bit longer than needed. So you can just put a jug in the, in the fridge and that's it, you have cold drinking water without having to turn your tap on all the time. How to save water in the bathroom. First of all, reduce your shower time. Uh, we have these really cool um, shower timers from Watercare that you will all be getting. And they are four minute shower timers. We usually recommend in the dry season trying, trying to cut that down to two minutes, but I do understand it's hard for some people, especially teenagers or kids or your family and friends that don't live on Waiheke and they don't really know about it. As well, if you own a house and rent it out, maybe your renters are not aware of this. So you can just put in a shower timer in there and that will give people a good reminder. If you don't wanna use this, you can also just choose a couple of songs that will last four minutes and then that will be your cue to get out of the shower. You can also choose a low flow shower head Turn off your bathroom tap while brushing your teeth or shaving. And if it's time for you to replace your toilet, maybe get a water efficient dual flush toilet. If you have a really old school one like mine, a really easy way to prevent wasting too much water from your cistern is just get a plastic water bottle and you fill it with water and you pop it in your cistern making sure it doesn't affect how it's working or it's not gonna plug anything. And you can just put it there so it won't keep filling up all the way. How to save water in the laundry. One of the best things people can do is invest in switching from a top, lo top loader washing machine to a front loader. They save a lot more water. You can change to water efficient settings on your washing machine. Some of them have an eco setting or you can choose to rinse your clothes just once instead of twice. Don't wash small loads, wash full loads and use a bucket and recycle water when washing clothes by hand. And that's also really good if you, if you use septic friendly products that don't have all the nasty chemicals in them, and then you can even use that in your garden. We wouldn't recommend a veggie patch because they're very, you know, like we want to make sure they don't get contaminated with anything, but you can pop that in your garden. Your plants will be very happy. And I tell my friends, I have a toddler, so I tell my friends all the time that if you ever feel lonely, remember, laundry will always be there for you. That's another tip on don't do your laundry twice, three times a day. Try to do it once a day so you don't get, you know, 90 liters of water going to your septic system all at once. So between shower and laundry combined, they use 50% of your overall water consumption. So we have some cool stats here for you on how much water you could save. So if you change to a better appliance, for example, an eight kilo washing machine, switching from a three star machine to a four and a half star machine could save around 49 liters per wash. That means if you do five loads per week, you could save around 14,000 liters per year. That's 140 bathtubs full. And not only that, if you think of the price of getting a 12,500 liter load from one of our local suppliers, we could be looking at over $350 for that. So that's the money that you could put towards a better performing washing machine. Uh, you'll save your money on water and as well, you won't affect your septic system as much. 
Switching from a three star to a four star shower head could save up to four and a half liters per minute. If you have an eight minute shower every day, please don't, four minutes or two, that's saving more than 13,000 liters per person over a year. That's 130 bathtubs full of water. I know everyone is a king gardener here on Waiheke, and here are some tips on how to save water in the garden. So if you use a handheld hose with a trigger nozzle, that's a really good idea. You can reuse water from the shower, sink, or fish tank. So because I have a low pressure um, hot water cylinder, what I do is I put a bucket under the shower while the water is heating up and I keep that bucket to either flush the toilet or bring it out to my garden. Learn the watering needs of your plants. Water your garden early in the morning or late afternoon. Add mulch and seal in the moisture and consider plants with low watering needs. And here's a little bit about gray water. I know this looks like a lot of information, but like I said, I'll send that through to everyone at the end of, of the presentation. So how can we recycle gray water? If you're just using a bucket for your sink or your bathtub or your laundry, you don't really need to worry about consent for gray water. But if you are thinking about getting a small tank to store and recycle gray water, you might need to require a building consent. So on the email, I'll put in the email address and the link as well, how to contact Auckland Council in regards to that and, and how you can recycle your own gray water from home. Like I said, I only use um, eco-friendly products at home. So it's really easy for me just to grab a bucket and especially when my daughter has a bath, and then we just use that to water the garden. And collecting rainwater. Um, another thing I'd like to say is that Auckland Council is about to release a new homeowner's guide. So they will update some of these rules. Uh, that's why I don't want to spend too much time on, on these right now. It's just a guide for the moment. Uh, once they release the new guide, we'll have another workshop. So if you would like to come to that workshop, you can uh, subscribe to our, to our newsletter and then you'll get a notice of a date. Um, and they will talk about collecting rainwater, gray water and storm water management at home as well. So that will be really interesting. Uh, so if you're just collecting rainwater to use in your garden or outside, you don't need a consent for that. But if you want to collect for um, indoor use, or if it's a rain tank over 6,000 liters, then you will need a resource consent. And then there's a number there that you can call for more information if you have any questions. But if you're just having a small one outside to collect extra when rainwater for the garden, you don't need a consent. And if you have any questions, reach out for help. We're here to assist you on how to save water, how to care for your septic tank. So anything you need, um, I'll send you my address, email address. So we're here to help. And now we can move to the questions and answers and we can also share some tips together. Thanks, Natalia. We have a couple of questions. Um, one question Mary asked was, is the capacity for your septic tank based on the number of bedrooms? Yes. At the moment, that's, uh, that's how they give consents out. So sometimes people add a bedroom without consent, and then that means they're in a bit of trouble uh, because that affects on how their septic system will perform. But yeah, you can always talk to us and we'll help you deal with that situation. And also, Mary was wondering what products she could use to clean, for example, the toilet without using colored cleaning liquids like toilet duck and harpic, which 
Most of us know, and Mary does, mm -hmm. that that's not good for your septic tank. Yes, yes, they are quite nasty for your septic tank. They kill bacteria, but they also kill good bacteria. And we want those good bugs living in our septic tank to do their job, to clean the water. So we don't want to add that in our toilet bowl. So um, EcoStore, they have a toilet bowl cleaner that is really good. People can you also use um, vinegar and baking soda. I've used that before to clean my toilet bowl. And I can send a list of some other ideas on how to clean your home with uh, septic friendly products. And if you look for the EnviroMark or the EcoChoice label, that's how you can tell if a product is good for your, for your septic tank and for gray water use as well. But yeah, EcoStar, they do a really good job at only releasing uh, cleaning products and beauty products that are safe for the septic. And that was all the questions that we have um, in the chat. Mary's just saying that she would really appreciate the list. Yeah, the list is great, I have to say. Yeah. On their septic uh, system care workshop, we talk a lot about that and we go into a little bit more detail. We also talk about water saving like this. So we're just breaking up our workshop into one hour time so it doesn't get too boring. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we often offer the septic system health workshop throughout the year, at least four times a year. So uh, don't be afraid, you're not going to miss out. And yes, I'll send you a list on the, on the email as well on what's safe to use. Great. I've got a question. Yes. Yeah, so um, if we can't use those products in our septic tanks, such as toilet duck and the unusually colored products, I wonder why they're for sale in the supermarket. I wonder the same thing. <laughs> we're, all, we're all on septic tanks, just about, apart from a small group in Onuroa. Mm -hmm. yes. We're all, you know, subject to the same sort of problems. And with the worm farming septic, because you know, the what are the septic tanks called with the worms rather than um, uh, jet stream? Um, yes, yeah, it starts with a V. I remember, uh, I'm trying to remember the name. Yeah, just as case. Biolytic, biolytics, I think. Mm. Um, so I guess you have to be even more careful if you've yeah. got a worm septic tank. And I do have a couple of friends who have them and they're really successful. Mm -hmm. uh, when they've gone away and other people have been staying and they've used various shampoos and whatever yes. has gone wrong. Yes, for sure. You have to be really careful with that. And um, yeah, yeah, that's that's a really good point. When we have visitors, you know, it's all, we always have the Waiheke talk. <laughs> so we talk to them about the way we live on Waiheke and the things that we should do when we're here what we can use to clean the house, you know, being Brazilian, when my sister was here, she just wanted to use bleach on everything. And I'm like, no, 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 we don't do that. <laughs> you know, bleach is a big no-no for, you know, putting inside the septic system. I know sometimes people have to use it around the house and we say, just dump it out on gravel outside because it will get filtrated. But if you just dump it in your septic system, that's when you're gonna start smelling it and no one wants that. Natalia, that raises a question in my mind. What about dumping that sort of stuff in a drain, an outdoor drain? Well, the outdoor drain will go into your septic. Okay. Yeah, so paint, thinners, into the you know, septic. yeah. Yeah. What about Bakashi in the septic tank? I do use Bakashi juice in my septic oh, tank. Oh, the juice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's amazing. That's like food for the good bugs and it will reduce the smell. So um, if you use it regularly, it will be very healthy for your septic system. And some people even do a shock treatment with biozyme, with the industrial biozyme that you can get from Green Acres and from us as well. So that's the EMs, the effective microorganisms that you can just 
pour down and yeah, it's really good. You're doing a good job there, Kathy. And I just wanted to go back to the cleaning products. Uh, some of them say that they are safe for septic tanks, but they're actually not. But they say they are, but they're not. <laughs> so yeah, it's really hard to, to like, how, how can we tell people what's safe or not if on the label it says it's okay? So yeah. We've talked to Countdown about not stocking products that are not safe for septic tanks. So yeah, maybe we'll go to corporate one day. We can all do, you know, like a, a mailing list and say, please don't put this in your sh on your shelves. It's hard for people to know the difference. Mm. Well, I've got a quick question. Um, I use a bucket to um, catch all the, the water when I have a shower. And I, and I store it outside and I've been putting it on my plants. Mm -hmm. I just sort of realized as we're having this conversation, um, like I put them on my edibles. Should I be not putting my shower water on my edibles and just do it in the other parts of my garden? Uh, it depends on what kind of products you use when you're showering. Mm. So if they contain, you know, a lot of perfumes or, or chemicals, we would recommend against it. You know, like soil is a beautiful thing and they can filter out a lot, but we, we would, say, would avoid it. That's what I would do, uh, depending on what kind of products you use, especially if it's anything antibacterial. Um, I know, especially with COVID, a lot of people are buying antibacterial soap um, and that's not, not good for the plants. But um, if you're using products that are uh, have more natural ingredients and don't have any nasty chemicals, that should be fine. Thanks for asking the question, Sarah. And Natalia, um, Mary posted a comment that where she said that I went to your workshop with Sylvia last year and found it very interesting. And then Kathy also um, mentioned that Mike talks about the crust on your septic tanks, which is caused by people using too much toilet paper. So I don't know if you want to comment on that anymore. Yes. I know course. that was an issue for it's us. Always... I had to lay down the law in my family. Yes. Yes. And, and wipes as well. Flushable wipes. There's no such thing as flushable wipes, even though they say they're flushable uh, so that they can really clog up your system and it's very expensive to fix and it's just a big mess but that's right um with the with the septic tank and toilet paper you also have to make sure you're buying the toilet paper that is suitable for septic tanks so most of them have that on the label if they don't say it's probably because they're not but I believe Earth Care and another, um, a couple other brands that you can find at Countdown, they say they're, uh, it's okay for septic tanks. So the thicker it is, the more plies it has, it's not that good because it's going to take a while to dissolve. So yeah, checking your toilet paper or just buying what I like to call a bum gun. I don't know if anyone has ever heard of that. Uh, if you've been to Southeast Asia or India, you might have seen it. You can um, just attach it to your toilet, to the cistern hose, and then you can wash yourself instead of using toilet paper. All right, thanks for that. And then Kathy also mentioned the idea that using too much fat and oil is also a problem. <clears throat> and that's best to tip out in the gravel or on the in the garden. Yes, yes. And there's also a collection for oil on Waiheke at the Oniroa gas station, next to the Oniroa gas station. So if you just collect your cooking oil in a, in a jar, you can bring it there and dispose of it there. So that's a, a really good way to do it. I just wanted to ask, does anyone have any tips they would like to share with us regarding water sa saving? what you do at home to save water? Oh, Kathy's got something. Yes, okay, so um, we built wicking beds for our raised vegetable beds and a wicking bed is something that has a water flow underneath it. Mm -hmm. So um, the plants have always got some moisture. So it's a wonderful way and you can tip your shower water there because it doesn't actually touch 
the plan, mm. the top of the yeah. plan. So it's all underneath. Look at, but look it up if you want to do it. It's a really great way for very dry um, seasons to conserve that water and grow the plants. Wow, also, that's a really good idea. We do that British thing, you know, where they have, I used to think they were really rather odd, but they have a container in the sink that mm -hmm. is always there. And so you wash your dishes over the container and you can tip that sink container into the garden or into a bucket to use later. Yeah. Yeah, that's really good. Mike is British and he's taking me to task. What do you say, Mike? Yes, but they um, already uh, said that uh, in buckets. That's, yeah. yeah. That also allows the crust on the toilet to get bigger because yeah. it's not being regularly crushed for so much water. Okay, so and it's so important that there is a certain the amount of water going source. into your septic system, particularly mm -hmm. if it is one that a lot of us have, which is the two tank septic water. stuff. Water. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So the shower water isn't that great in the septic tank. Um, and well, that you just said it could add to the no, crust. No, okay. Oh, I'm getting stuff. told off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I'm not listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, another uh, great way to save water from going to the septic tank is a compostable toilet. Uh, there are many benefits to having a compostable toilet, and my favorite is that it doesn't spray all the particles into the air when you flush. Um, so yeah, it, it's healthier for you as well, having a compostable toilet. Uh, but we're going to have a session specifically on that because that's a very, you know, broad um, subject. And I have specialists coming in to, to talk about it because I don't know much about um, composting toilets, but it's also a great way to save water at home. Are the composting toilets allowed on Waiheke? Are you consenting? Uh, only if you also have everything set up for a regular toilet. Because, for example, if you sell your house, the next person wouldn't know how to use it safely. So they have to be able to put in a regular toilet as well. So even if you choose to have a, a composting toilet, you have to get a consent and install all the pipes and everything for the regular toilet as well. So we will learn more about the different um, consents that are coming up from Auckland Council when they release their homeowner's guide. So we'll have a little bit more guidance on that. Nice. Just perhaps to repeat, um, Natalia, that if everybody is on our the WRT mailing list and they'll get information about when these workshops are coming up and particularly the ones that are going to be announcing the new information. So yeah, it, I'm assuming that the people on this call might be, but if you know other people who aren't, that would be a good suggestion. Yeah, and we always post on Facebook as well, but I know a lot of people are not on Facebook. So if you know a neighbor, a family member, a friend that is interested in the subject, they can always call us and we can give them a little bit more information about that. I saw the advertisement in the Gulf News as well. So yeah. I, you are trying to get it out there, I know. So <laughs> I hope more people will. Yes, I know this is a tricky time um, of the know, day, the evening to have a workshop. It's the first time I do it at this time um so yeah let's see if it works out uh, i would like to share one tip that i have because like i said i have a toddler very busy so uh this is my tip for saving water does anyone know what this is it's a reusable water bomb ah. So instead of buying those balloons made of plastic, you can just make these at home and use them for ages. Oh, and brilliant. that's what you can do. You can just save water from when you start your shower. You know, you're just waiting for until your water gets hot. Uh, save that water up and you can take it to the beach as well. 
and they can play around splashing one another without having to use the plastic balloons and having to pick those up so the birds don't eat it and yeah it's just fun so yeah Gosh, I thought they might be Christmas tree decorations. I was thinking, hey, <laughs> time. Yeah, I have a I have a whole list that I I'll include in the email as well of activities for kids because sometimes we have we hopefully we'll get uh, families visiting us for for the holidays if the alert levels go down. I know everyone's very hopeful. So, you know, if you get your tamariki or mokopuna coming back home and you want to do some fun activities with them, I'll share some ideas with you. This is all, this one is always a winner because kids love playing with this and it can even add, you know, like some coloring. So it's like a, a paintball kind of game. So yeah, they have loads of fun with this. Awesome. I just wanted to, you know, before we go, say thank you to Leslie for being here supporting me, uh, to everyone that came in, um, to the team at WRT, um, Eco Matters in Auckland, uh, Eco Store, who provided us with the prize that we're going to find here at the end, find out the winner. Uh, Water Care and the Waiheke Local Board for supporting this project. Cool. Now let's see who's going to win the prize. Okay. Just gonna press here. I haven't tried this before. So um, I added the name of everybody who, um, who registered. So we're going to see who will get the prize. Let me just close this. Sorry, I'm just trying to see who's still here. We've got Mary and Sarah and yeah. Kathy. Mary. All right, let's see. You. But everyone is getting one of these cool shower timers. So awesome. And they are cool, I have to say. We <laughs> have some, they're really lovely. Okay, I'm just going to minimize my screen so everybody can see it. Oh, I thought it was going to be Sarah. <laughs> cool, all right. We'll have to say send Tracy a message um, and she can pick that up from our center when we reopen, hopefully next, next week. Yeah, so before we say goodbye, um, does anyone have another question or would like to get uh, some extra information on the email so I can add that in? It looks like we're good. There's nothing else in the chat, Natalia. Great. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a good evening. And uh, hopefully we can have one of these in person again soon. Right. Thanks, Mary. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Thank, Thank you, Kathy. Mary. Thank you, Kathy. Oh, well, that was really interesting. I learned, I learned stuff every time. I know, I do too. And I, I mean, I, I've been gone to a half a dozen and there's always something, always something. Yeah, so thank you guys. That was perfect. Oh, thank you. Make the water sponges. Yeah, I yeah. can't wait to see that one. Yeah, that one is fun. Maybe we can have that as a team building exercise when we get back to the office. Oh yeah, what a great idea. Great okay. idea. Thank you very much, guys. Have a good one. Thank Have you. Good night. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.